Now, please remember that this whole operation of modulation is taking place at carrier frequency, which is very high frequency. We know that like BJT, every active device contains something called as junction capacitors. So in case of tube also, there is a junction capacitor. One of the junction capacitor is present between grid and plate junction. So between grid and plate junction, there is a junction capacitor present whose value will be very small of the order of picofarad. And hence at low and mid frequencies, they will not play any role in the working of the circuit. But at high frequencies, because the frequency is very high, they will start offering low impedance and hence there will exist connection, low impedance path between the two terminals of the device. Now, if that happens, it is going to create a problem because this capacitor junction capacitor provides low impedance path between grid and the plate grid here acts as input terminal with respect to plate, which acts as output terminal. This gives rise to the feedback path. If this feedback happens to be positive feedback, then we all know that in an amplifier, if the if there's a positive feedback uh, given, then amplifier will start oscillating. In other words, uh, the output will simply be uh, some oscillations, which will not be in proportion with our input signals. So my entire circuit will become unstable. Now this could be very major problem, which needs to be somehow avoided. The only way in which I can get rid of this problem is by somehow canceling the feedback signal which is provided by this junction capacitor. That is because we cannot remove the junction capacitor. It is not externally connected capacitor. It is the capacitive effect which is generated across the junction. So all we can do is uh, whatever feedback signal the capacitor generates, we can generate one more feedback signal which will be out of phase to the signal generated by junction capacitor so that when both the signals are added the overall resulting feedback signal will be zero so to counteract the junction capacitor let me call it cj we connect neutralizing capacitor cn you can see it is connected between plate terminal and the other end of the grid transformer. So junction capacitor is between plate, but at the upper end of the grid transformer and CN is between plate terminals and at the lower end of the grid transformer. That simply means that the feedback signals which are coming to the grid side will be out of phase or in simple words, they are subtracted. So when they are subtracted, the overall feedback signal will become zero. So CN will get rid of any positive feedback that may exist and hence circuit stability will improve. The next set of components is RFC, which stands for radio frequency choke and CB. Uh, this structure of inductor and capacitor forms high pass filter. It will allow the passage of low frequency signal, but it will block the passage of high frequency signal. Now on the plate side, we have plate current which is generated at the frequency of carrier signal. So it's high frequency signal on the plate side above RFC. Below RFC, we have a modulating signal, which is coming from the power amplifier. Modulating signal is of low frequency. Because this whole structure acts as a high pass filter, modulating signal will be passed towards the tube side, but high frequency current pulses will be blocked going towards the other side. And that's what we want. We don't want the high frequency signal of plate to go towards the power supply side or the power amplifier side. We want the high frequency current pulses to go to the output tank circuit so that my final AM signal can be generated. So RFC and capacitor together will block the passage of high frequency signal of the plate towards the VBB power supply.